Yo, welcome back to Containing Luxury. On this episode, we're gonna be discussing why connecting two containers is a lot more complicated than you think, and why one container might be the way to go. Let's get started. Start okay, so first things first, I know you're probably thinking, where did Blake get this amazing haircut? And the truth is, I don't remember where I got it. Why is connecting two containers way bigger of a pain in the butt than you would expect? If you think about it, you have one container, like the one behind us. We've done our tour. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. Um, but the single containers, if you think about it, all you have is a couple minor penetrations for where your windows and doors are gonna go. So other than that, you really don't have to do anything to the outside of the container. You can maintain it. It's meant to be a watertight structure. So the second we take two containers, and we butt them up against each other, we now have to cut out much larger sections, which could possibly require some structural supports going in. And also, we now have to waterproof the two connection points because the tops of these containers are actually slightly concaved. So the water, if it hits the middle, it's meant to kind of slowly dump off to the sides. So if you butt two together, they're now concaved with a crease in the middle where water's gonna pool. That also happens to be the point where you just connected them. So that's not a good place to have water pooling. So generally, when you connect two together, it now forces you to not only weld a watertight seal all the way around that with some type of flat stock steel, it's also gonna need to be rust treated, and then it's gonna have to be waterproofed. And then in most cases, we would highly recommend you actually put a roof over the top of those as well. Now, that's almost forced to happen if you have two containers. If you have one container, you don't have to do anything to the outside. You may want to put a roof on a single container, like we did here, but that's just to have a little bit of overhang, maybe some sun protection, or possibly just aesthetics. So it's not a required aspect of the build, whereas two containers together, it kind of becomes something that's required. So that's why when a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, usually when you increase square footage of a home build, the cost per square foot, when you analyze it, it actually usually goes down a little bit because if you're not increasing the amount of bathrooms or the kitchens in the home, generally the rest of the square footage is not that expensive to finish out. That's not really the case when you get into container homes because when, you're, when you butt the two together, it actually requires a lot more work involved, possibly even some structural work involved even foundation work. So there, there's a lot more that goes into it that way to literally to the point where it's almost double the cost of the first container to get the second container. And in most cases for us, it, it has been almost identical double the cost. So typically, if you're doing a two container build or you're doing a one container build, say you could accomplish something similar to what we have behind us at around you know, 50 to $75,000. The second you get into putting two together, you're gonna immediately be somewhere in the 90 to $130,000 range, typically, just from my experience. Now, I've seen people do them in other ways. I wasn't very fond of how they waterproofed them, and honestly, the whole point of using shipping containers for me and my designs was longevity and structural integrity and knowing that I literally don't have to do anything to this thing for 30 years other than maybe a coat of paint. And if you don't waterproof those things, you're gonna potentially have some major leak points and issues, and that's where it's not exactly gonna be maintenance friend friendly for you. So you, anytime you build, you wanna make sure you're building it right. And any, any design we've seen where it requires connecting two containers together, it now adds a whole nother level of waterproofing and even roofing to, to really make that structure be solid and watertight. So anyway, that's about the only reason I can quite frankly think that connecting two containers is way bigger pain than most people think. And why I oftentimes recommend single containers as a direct trailer park type of replacement seems to be the best use that I can come up with. Uh, anytime you get into the three, four, five, six container home builds, it becomes something that's more of a novelty and a lot less of something that's financially making sense. Typically, you can go to conventional construction methods and build a very similar, uh, if not inex less expensive than, than the alternative using containers. So anyway, guys, I hope this video has been informative for you. And if you have any questions, make sure to hit the comments below and we will try to respond in a timely manner. 
So guys, uh, we appreciate it. Make sure to also see, we are an educational channel. So we have a Patreon account. Make sure to support us, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Containing luxury with blackout coffee, out.